have that conversation, smile at the people, hand out those little wings and the little cards and all the things, talk to the kids, bring some first class snacks and ask the parents like, hey, can I give them, you know, I got some gummy bears or whatever. That goes so far. If you have the ability to do that, awesome. Most pilots don't understand what career opportunities are available in the world of aviation. They're making career decisions based on advice from friends or posts on internet forums, meaning they are taking huge risks with their livelihood without having all the details. This podcast was created to help you understand the aviation industry so you can find your dream job. Let's get ready for pushback. Here's your host and my dad, Nick Fialka. Hey, pilot, what's up? It's Nick Fialka. Today is another solo episode, and today's topic is customer service, and there is so much to unpack. Customer service, the reason we're talking about that today is because you are super, super likely to have a question about customer service pop up in your interview, and you really need to be ready to answer that. This is going to be a primer, right? Like this is going to be a 10,000 foot view of some really important topics to think about. But the way to get good at this and the way to really dive into this is with our friends at Spitfire and getting the reps and getting the feedback and getting the guidance from the coaches. Like that's how you get good at this. So as I'm going through, like take notes, this is good information I'm passing, but if you want to crush it, like there's only one way and it's Spitfire. It always is. There's so much to unpack. And I want to tell you a story before we get going. Before I started in the airlines and I went down that path, I was an entrepreneur and I built an RV park in Florida And it's still there. It's still an awesome place. And when I was building it, I built it from scratch, from nothing. I had a cool business partner and we just kind of made it happen. It's huge, like 12 acres, 80 sites, big, big place. When we were building it and things were moving along, one of my mentors is a really cool cat who is one of the people that established Chick-fil-A's customer service model. And if you've ever been to Chick-fil-A, you know that it's, you know, what are you getting? You go into Chick-fil-A, you're getting chicken. It's going to be chicken or chicken. It's not going to be a hamburger. It's going to be chicken. But when you drive up to a Chick-fil-A, there's a line of cars around the corner. Why? Because they want chicken and French fries? Kind of. But what is it that sets them apart? It's their my pleasure. It's their kind words. It's the happiness and the joy that they have. Each person that works there is a joy to work with. They're always smiling. You never have a bad experience at Chick-fil-A. And so this guy, we were having this conversation. I was getting ready to open my park. And actually, I think I might have already had it open. And he asked me, he's like, how's it going? I was like, oh, you know, it's good. He asked me kind of the process of what happens. And I said, well, customer pulls up and they walk up to me. I ask them how long they're going to stay. And they give me, you know. $37 to stay the night and, you know, I give them a map and they go park. And he said, well, cool. That's really interesting. What is it that makes you different? And I said, well, I mean, like, it's a really nice park and I've got these brand new palm trees and, you know, I got concrete slabs. He's like, yeah, but what, like, what are they going to remember? And I, I sat there and, and I thought, And he said, listen, man, like you need to go back and think about what it is that you can do at your park for your customer that nobody else in the RV industry would do. And he challenged me and he said, come back to me next week and let's have a conversation about it. So I did. I left, I went and I thought about it, thought about it, thought about it, thought about it, thought about it. And I kind of came up with this plan. I ran it by him. He said, hey, this is a good plan. So here's how it went. I'm t- like, trust me, this gets to a point. When a guest would come up, I would go out and meet them. And I would be happy to have them, bring them into the office, sit down, chat with them for a little bit, do the transaction, find out where they're going to park. But then here's the difference. I'd hop in my golf cart and ask them to follow me. Um, we had a good brief on what we were going to do. And then we would drive around to the site 
And if they had a back end site and they had a big trailer, I would be the person to back their RV in. I would hop in there and their 45 foot toy hauler and I would back that thing in. Why? Because my customers are mostly in their 60s and they are mostly driving through the day. It's evening time or nighttime. They don't have a really great night vision. They're tired. They're, they're fatigued and it's been a hard, hard day. So I'd back them in and then I'd set up their levels and I'd level out their RV and then I'd hook up their water and then I'd hook up their power and then I'd hook up their sewer. And, you know, I'd make sure they're all set. I'd put the mat in front of the steps and I'd shake their hand and tell them that I hope they had a great day. And if they get a chance, give us a review. When, okay, so fast forward, I own that park for, I think, five years. And before the first year was over, I went from zero reviews on Google to the highest rated RV park in the state of Florida. Like I went from zero to the highest rated. And the reason I did is because I provided an experience. I wasn't just giving them customer service. It wasn't just transactional. I was giving them a piece of myself. And that, listen, that is what it's all about. And it is easy to sit back and think about, I'm in the front seat. I'm the Uber driver, right? Like I'm in the front seat of this aircraft. I'm going to get it from point A to point B. It's going to be just fine. We're going to do it safely. Boom. There's your customer service. Hell yeah. High fives all the way around. And that's bullshit. Like that is nothing. You did your job. Congratulations. You did your job. You did the absolute minimum. Way to go. Give yourself a high five. You guys are great. But what is it that you do that is not the minimum, right? That is that is so important. And the airlines want to know, right? They want a customer that is a like a loyal brand ambassador. They want a customer that's going to come back. You look at these companies that think about, you know, Breeze, like the world's nicest airline or Southwest, like Southwest with their flight attendants singing to people, you know, feel the love, all that stuff. And Delta, you know, they think they're the Chick-fil-A of airlines, which is awesome. And they do a great job with customer service. They want their people to fly. Southwest wants their people to fly Southwest no matter what. They clearly have had some issues in the past with the reliability in the, in the recent past. But as that moves on, this is their thing. That's their, like people that fly Southwest love Southwest and they stick with Southwest and that's it. All it takes is encountering the human in your person, in your customer, in the people with people you're walking through the airport. If that's your job right now, if you're at a regional or something and you're trying to move on, walk through the airport and then go to the gate and sit down. You're in your pilot uniform. You look great and start having a chat, have a conversation. Hey, how's your day going? Where are you going? Yeah. And just chat with them for a little bit. Tell them like, Hey, I'm your pilot flying. We're going to go to LaGuardia The weather's is going to be a little bit bumpy, you know, give them some piece of you because that is so important. And that is the connection. That is the experience. When you give of yourself, you're not being transactional and dive down deep. If you are a captain at a regional or something, get on like straight up. It's going to be weird. It's going to be uncomfortable. It takes a little bit of practice, but go up to the gate agent, ask for the handset and talk to the customers. Tell them what you're going to do. Tell them what to expect. Helps every if you there's a delay. Hell yeah, tell them there's a delay. Talk to them about that. Nobody does it. There was a guy. There was a United captain on LinkedIn had like two million views of him just standing up there like, "Hey everybody, my name's Hank. Hope you guys are having a great day. This is Nick. He's my first officer. We're going over to Orlando, and right now it is a rainy day." But it should clear up in a little bit. We're going to be bored in about 15 minutes. And it just kind of goes into this thing. And it was awesome. People were really enjoying it. He was kind of joking with people like, be careful on your jokes, right? I say that mostly for me. I'm the one that gets the weirdo jokes. So that is exceptional customer service. That is the customer experience 
like personified, right? That's what your airline is looking for. They're not looking for a story about the time you pushed grandma up the jet bridge and left her with a gate agent. Like everybody that can fog a mirror has done that. So that's just it, right? Like if you're delivering a, an exceptional customer service experience, right? That's the barrier that you keep up between your company and their competitors. The better customer service that you can provide, the better experience that you can provide, that fences off those people and makes them permanent, lifelong, valued customers. Like they'll never forget it. They're going to get to wherever they're going on Thanksgiving or at the funeral or wherever they're going. And they're going to have a conversation about that experience. And that will have impact, right? It will have it will have impact not just on that person, but all the people that they tell down the line. And so you may not think it's a big deal, but it, it will be a big deal for them. A really great quote that when I was looking this stuff up, when I was kind of doing some research, Maya Angelou, man, she said, they may forget what you said, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And that, my friend, like that is it. How do you make them feel? You sir, like think about it. If your mom's on that flight, like how do you want somebody to treat your mom in the airport? How do you want them to treat you in the like shoulder to shoulder pushing through? You're in Atlanta trying to get on the train. Like it's tough. Have that conversation. Smile at the people. Hand out those little wings and the little cards and all the things. Talk to the kids. Bring some first class snacks and ask the parents like, hey, can I give them, you know, I got some gummy bears or whatever. That goes so far. If you have the ability to do that, awesome. Now, I've been talking a lot about life in the airport, but if you're not, maybe you're a flight instructor man, how can you change the life of your student? How can you change the lives of many students and really affect that? If you are in college and you are working your way there, think about the things you can do to get involved, to volunteer yourself, to give your give of yourself. And that's where your volunteering really comes into, really comes into play. Um, if you do not have a solid idea for what your customer service experience, you know, answer is going to be, now's your time to start working on it. And like, you know, you don't have to have it crafted well right now. That's fine. But you do need to have an idea of the the things you would talk about. Like I'm the, I'm the guy you're going to talk to and run them through and come up with a really good, how to sort out the story and make it legit. Like that's me and that's my team and that's what we do. But you need to be getting your experiences so that you can have those conversations and make them awesome. So when I was asked to tell about a customer service story, when I interviewed, I told one from my RV park and I did not tell like how we did that. Here's what I told. I'm going to kind of paraphrase this, but I had a park host and a park host is a person that manages the day to day operations of the park. And I was still in the Navy and doing some stuff. And so I would be in and out and I'd usually be home in the evening time and I get the debrief from my park host. He was 82 years old. He was retired Navy master chief. And if you've ever met a retired Navy master chief, you can imagine what kind of person that is. And I can tell you that guy, he takes no shit. He is gruff. He is all heart, but he will get the job done. And he always did. And he was like my favorite guy. And so his name's Bill. And I got home from work, went into the office. He's like, hey, man, we got to have a talk. I was like, uh oh, what's up? And he's like, this guy down on number 17, he wanted site number 18, but instead he got 17 and he's pissed. And he's been mad and he's been yelling since he got here like three hours ago. I was like, oh man. <sighs> All right. So the reason he wanted site 18 was because it was a pull through and an RV, a pull through is way easier than backing yourself in. Right. And so he was upset and he was being, you know, rightly so he was expecting this one. We weren't able to give it to him. So the first thing, you know, like definitely, definitely a bummer. So I was already in my flight suit. Uh, my bill told me that this guy was a retired Navy guy. So I stayed in my flight suit and I went down there and chatted with him and I had this conversation, just introduced myself. And I said, Hey, my name's Nick. I just wanted to say hi. I heard you were in the Navy and like, 
we just talked like he had, he had navy stuff like everywhere so we talked and talked and talked and we talked for close darn near 40 minutes and he you know like i didn't tell him i was the owner of the park i just introduced myself as nick and we talked navy stuff for ever and he told me all about what it was like work like in the cold war and stuff like that really interesting conversation and at the end of that i said well listen i've got to go it's time i got to have dinner with the kids but i wanted to let you know that i heard that you wanted this spot and you didn't get it and he's like oh yeah that was the worst and i said i am the owner of this park and i refunded you for your stay he was staying three nights i said i, I went ahead and refunded you And here, I want you to have this. This is a pass for two free nights for your next time you come. And I'm really sorry. I'll work on uh, trying to get you a site that you really want. And that guy was falling over himself like, oh, you don't have to do that. I'm so sorry. This is way too much, blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know, like, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. I want you to feel valued and I want you to know that you're important to us. And that guy, let me tell you what. First off, that guy wrote me a five-star review. Second off, that guy would come once a month to the park for the rest of the time I own the park. He probably still goes to the park because I got a lifelong customer. And I got that lifelong customer because I went and did the extra thing. And I didn't have to, and but I found a way to make it work. And I know you can't give people free flights and stuff like that, but you can do the things that are important to people that are really going to resonate with them military people, right? So we talked about flight students and and flight instructors. And if you're a military person, first off, I don't want you to tell a story about going kinetic, about blowing something up or something like that and saving some troops or something. Combat stories are for another time and they never go well when you have a, you don't know if the person that you're sitting across from supports the troops or doesn't. You just don't. So You could be walking into a hornet's nest if you, especially if you're like talking about something in Afghanistan and all of a sudden you have an Afghani person interviewing you, like you don't want to go down that road. What I do want you to do is think about how you serve your people. If you're an officer, how do you serve your enlisted? How do you help them day in and day out? If you're enlisted, how do you help your fellow soldiers and sailors and airmen and all that stuff? Like, or pivot and talk about something else. Talk about a really great time you had with a summer job. Talk about something you did volunteering. If you're not volunteering, you've heard me say it before. If you haven't, go volunteer. Find a thing. I don't care what it is. Go volunteer. If you're volunteering to groom kittens and paint their fingernail, their toenails and stuff like that. And that's your thing. Like go do it and be the best at it and have a great story to bring because that people will be like, what? That's a crazy story. I really want to hear that. So go get your story. If you don't already have your story, like that's the whole point, right? Go get one, go start serving, get out of your own little comfortable chair and go forward somewhere that is a little more uncomfortable because that in the long run is how you get a good answer to a question like that. And of course, like give a call. You want to bounce stuff off. Like I'm happy to help you guys chew the fat on that. And my coaches are too. So I don't know. I think that's probably all about, I've got to say about customer service and it's going to be crucial for your interviews. Any interview you do, you're going to get a customer service question and understanding. I want you to understand it on a deeper level. And that's kind of the idea for today. So anyway, next episode, it's going to be an interview episode and I will see you there. You guys are awesome. Let's keep crushing and uh, rock and roll. Let's go. Hey, before I let you go, I need to mention one thing because a lot of people are asking me, can you do anything? Can you help me with this? And the answer is yes. At Spitfire Elite, we will make more millionaires this year than Major League Baseball will make in the next five years. Our company actually does this. It's called Spitfire Elite Interview Consulting. And you can find us over at SpitfireElite.com. Our clients, they call us the easy button for interview prep because everything you need to crush your interview is there in one spot. Whether it's application review or interview prep, all of it is covered. We've helped thousands of clients who are now flying at their dream jobs because our coaches gave them the one-on-one feedback that they needed to succeed on the biggest day of their life. 
the best part of Spitfire is our community. All Spitfire clients will get access to our private chats where they can work with each other and they can work with our coaches and get the latest information on all the airlines. If you'd like to make sure that you are 100% ready to go on your big day, there is only one choice. Everything you need is in one place, and I think it's pretty affordable. You'll have to take a look for yourself. Just go over to SpitfireElite.com and check us out. Use the coupon code PODCAST and it'll save you 10%. And by the way, I will see you on the next episode. The statements made on this show are my own opinions and do not reflect, nor are they under any direction from my employer.